What is up everyone and welcome to a very highly requested video. In my last video I unboxed the iPhone 6 and quite a lot of you wanted to hear why I was ditching the HTC One M8. Now I was initially going to do one big video explaining quite a lot of things, why I chose the iPhone, why I wanted to get it, blah blah blah, and I was going to make a big deal out of it, but instead what I'm going to do is split it up. So today's video is simply going to be why I ditched the HTC One M8. We're not going to chat about why I bought the iPhone, we're not going to chat about iOS versus Android, and we're not going to talk about my phone history and what led me to these decisions. We're simply going to talk about why I disliked certain aspects of the HTC One M8 and ultimately why I wanted to replace it. There will be more phone videos coming up in the, in the near future. I don't know if they're going to be next year or later on in the month or whatever, but they will be here. But this is the most important one because a lot of you guys want to hear why I ditched the HTC. So before we get started, I've got three small disclaimers. Disclaimer number one is I am not a phone person. What do I mean by this? I basically mean that you have people these days that are obsessed with these devices. They basically live their whole lives and they revolve around them and they're always checking them and they're doing this, that and the other with various apps. I'm simply not like that. I use my phone for what I have to use it for and it's a very, very, very handy tool multiple times a day, but I am by no means ob obsessed with smartphones or consumer technology. Um, I like my tech, I'm a bit of a geek, I'm a bit of a nerd, but I'm not one of these people that's constantly glued to my phone on the bus or whatever, you know, I still live in the real world. So I'm not a dedicated phone person. To me, they are a tool. I do not have an interest in them as such. Disclaimer number two is this video is all my personal opinion. The HTC One M8 is generally regarded as a pretty good handset, but of course all of these reasons are just my opinion. That's what the whole video is about, fully my opinion, so a lot of you guys may have different opinions. That's okay, I'm simply deciding to share mine with you just to give you guys a perspective as to why I made the switch to the iPhone. And disclaimer three is quite an important one, and it is I don't faff with my phones. I don't have the time to... A lot of people say, root your device, put custom ROMs on it, or jailbreak your iPhone, or do all this crazy stuff. No. This kind of ties into the first disclaimer. I don't care. The phone works. I don't have time to fiddle with it. I'm not a phone person. I do not care for fiddling around with the operating system and doing little tweaks and that for whatever reason. It's just not my thing. So hopefully I've made that clear enough. I don't know how I can put it out there in another way. To me, it's just a tool and I use it for what I need to use it for. Uh, so let's get into the main section of this video and that is some pros and cons about the HTC One M8. So I've picked picked out six things that I absolutely love about the handset. Um, they're not necessarily things that I'm going to miss because maybe the iPhone is just as good, maybe better or not quite as good, whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to talk about them in comparison to the iPhone features. That will come later on. This is purely about the HTC One M8. So, point number one, and the first thing that I really like about that handset is the front-facing camera. It stood out to me right away. Um, it was a fantastic, fantastic upgrade over my Galaxy Note 2. Not necessarily the quality. I mean, the quality is, is bang on, really good. I, I wouldn't ever wish for more quality from a front-facing camera. But something that really struck me about the M8 was the wide-angle lens. You could hold the phone here, and you'd get your face in the entire frame instead of with like my Galaxy Note I had to hold it right back here and you know then you'd be in it so for vlogging when I vlogged with the One M8 for a very short period of time it was fantastic I loved the front facing camera absolutely great the second thing that I really like is the front facing stereo speakers of course front facing Big thumbs up there, makes a huge difference. Stereo speakers, again, thumbs up, makes a massive difference when you're watching something in landscape or it just makes a difference in general. Um, it doesn't really matter on the source of the audio. It doesn't matter if you're listening to music, watching films, YouTube videos, whatever. Either way, when you have two separate channels of audio, two speakers, it does surround you a lot more and it does make you feel more immersed with whatever you're listening to or watching or whatever. The speakers, uh, the fact that they're stereo and they they face forwards, 
is great, but we will speak about the speakers, we'll talk about the speakers a little bit more in great detail further on in the video. The third thing that I loved about the phone was the battery. I never had a hiccup with the battery. With my Galaxy Note, I was replacing batteries constantly. Granted, a few of them were my fault really for not taking that good battery health care of the device, but the One M8 never complained and I always, always got around two or three days out of it without fail, unless I was, you know, unless it was really pushing it like if I had something special on that day and I was watching three or four hours worth of video or something with my normal general day-to-day -day use I always got uh, two or three days out of the device normally two normally I charge it every other night and remember that a lot of that was in power saving mode because the phone is very powerful. I never really needed the full power. Um, so yeah, power saving mode, two or three days, was very happy with that. The battery is phenomenal. Of course, not user replaceable, but that doesn't really come into the argument because I never had a problem, problem with the battery. I never wanted to access it. So yeah, big thumbs up for the battery there. Number four is display quality. Now, uh, off the top of my head, I can't really remember any of the specs of the display, but the phone was always a pleasure to look at. The screen was always a joy. It had vibrant colors without being too in your face. I find the Samsung devices very, very colorful. They're almost like Fisher Price toys or something, the way they're so vibrant. You look at a picture of a pink flower and it's like, whoa, man, this is pink. Um, but the HTC is a lot more subtle. It's got very um, accurate colors from what I could see. Um, I'm not I'm not an expert or anything, but the colors, really nice and vibrant. The display could go very bright, which was great, but also could go very dim. A lot of smartphones don't go dim enough for my liking if you want to use them in a pitch black space or whatever. The HTC went very low on the brightness front of things and uh, the quality in terms of the resolution of the display and the actual pixel quality always found it fantastic I never had a hiccup with the display it looks absolutely great and the size of the display was also very welcomed I, al I always enjoyed using the display number five is a bit of an odd one but something that I'm not going to overlook because it was genuinely something pretty good about the phone and that was the included earphones. Now when I first plugged in my earphones to my HTC and I put them in my ears and I played a song, I was like, what is this mess of audio I'm listening to? It was like Beats audio to the extreme. What do I mean by that? If you look at a frequency diagram of uh, a sound that you're hearing, it's got this huge scoop in the middle. Consumer audio always has a massive scoop, so the mids are right down. So you've got loads of bass, which obviously consumers love, and you've got loads of highs, which makes audio sound clear and crisp to the consumer, to your average consumer, um, which is great. But if you're someone that knows even a tiny bit more about audio and you're used to having nice quality audio source from good headphones or good speakers or whatever, these kind of scoops in consumer equipment like these Bluetooth speakers and Beats headphones and things like that sound absolutely horrendous. You uh, can't hear the majority of male vocal to its full potential and in this case any vocal really was really bad. Um, snare drums just disappear, they're all in the mid-range, nice mid-range attack, they just disappear. A decent rock distorted guitar tone or any guitar tone for that matter just disappeared. Um, it was awful. but. I then discovered that it was a simple switch in the preferences in the phone and it had like a boom sound, I think it's called, enabled, and I turned that off and the earphones flattened out and they sounded pucker. So out of the box, horrible, bassy, no mid-range, horrible high end that's enough to de deafen you after listening to half an album. And uh, just by flipping that one switch, they were sounding fantastic. And the reason that I've decided to include them on this list is not only do they sound fantastic, they're also comfortable, they feel good quality, and they are still working a year and a half later. I normally break earphones after the first three or four weeks and replace them. Those HTC earphones are still working. So they are pretty much the best earphones I've ever owned. Um, so yeah, that definitely went on the list because I was not going to overlook that. And number six, the final point for the pros of this phone was, hang on, what was it? General build quality. The build quality of the One M8 is, for the most part, really damn good. You've got a solid brick in your pocket and it feels as if it could survive anything really. It's built with precision. It's not an Apple product, but it's built with precision 
and it's structurally sound. It's built pretty much like a tank and I never had any issues. Obviously, I would have told you if I did. Um, yeah, it feels as if it's built great. It feels good in the hand, but we will touch more upon maybe a slightly more negative side of that in the next section. So there's six things that I really like about the phone. Pretty positive points and I'm really glad that I included them first because that sort of lays down the foundation that I'm not a hater of this device because the next few points there are a few more cons than there are pros um, that I've decided to speak about in this video. Obviously there's a lot more out there but these are just the ones that I've decided to focus on. So let's get on to the part that you all want to hear and that is the cons of this device. Con number one, the rear camera. Can I just say that the rear camera on the 1M8 is an absolute train wreck, to say the least. It's useless. Uh, my Galaxy Note camera far exceeded it in pretty much every regard. And I would go as far as to say that even though it's a much lower resolution, I would even take the camera on my iPhone 3GS over the camera on the HTC. Um, it's not directly due to this ultra pixel thing and the dual camera thing but I did have that horrible issue with the blurry camera lens that a lot of 1M8 users have and once you have it there's pretty much nothing you can do about it. I could have sent my phone back but phew, it's just so much hassle. For those of you who don't know the top coating of the camera, can't remember the science of it, it comes off eventually and any light that hits the lens just bleeds all over the photograph. It's a train wreck of a camera. It was bad enough anyway, but then to have a fault like that in a high percentage of devices after they were shipped with this stupid coating rubbing off the lens, that was just diabolical. And uh, I am very disappointed with the year and a half's worth of photos that I have stored from that device. They look like crap. And uh, that is a big, big deal. I don't carry a camera around with me unless I'm vlogging. I'm not a photographer so I like to snap with my phone just as the majority of people do and the HTC did not even allow that without severe disappointment from me. So humongous thumbs down to the camera. Con number two is related again to the speakers. Now I praised the speakers in the first part of the video but I praised the fact that they were front facing and they were stereo. My con is they are overhyped speakers and they degrade over time. So when the phone was brand new, they sounded fantastic. Two weeks later, they sounded like crap. Um, not as bad as the camera in terms of how disappointed I was because all speakers degrade over time. And the the speakers in the 1M8 and probably the M7, and I, it wouldn't surprise me if the M9 is included, I don't even know, they are pushed far too hard. They should limit the max volume just so that the speakers don't get quite as trashed. But, you know, after a couple of weeks of playing some music and just general use, uh, the speakers did degrade in quality. And when I say that they're overhyped, I do believe that they are overhyped. Most reviewers say, these are the best speakers in the world, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they're probably the best in a phone uh, of today's standards. But I remember old Nokias from back in the day that sounded worlds better than the 1M8. Now, yes, it's a thin smartphone device, but it's not the thinnest smartphone out there. It's not wafer thin. So it's not that impressive. When you hold it in your hand, I was impressed at the beginning, but my impressedness soon went down. And yeah, I think the speakers are overhyped. The speakers would be fine if they um, limited the max volume a little more so they didn't degrade as much. And if they weren't hyped as much. They'd be fine because they're front facing and stereo. They're the two boxes ticked. Who expects crazy quality from their smartphone? You shouldn't do that anyway. But yeah, people buying the HTC devices just based on the speakers, no, that's just ridiculous in my opinion. Number three is a little bit of an unfair point, but it's something that did frustrate me, but it also frustrated me about my Galaxy Note, so I'm just gonna go over it quickly. That is the micro USB charging port. Cannot stand micro USB. Um, 
I often had a case where the cable would fall out, it would not clip in properly, I never knew which way around to put it. Um, I think that it is far, far weaker than the competition. I'm not going to compare to the iPhone in this video, but that will come in the future. Um, I know USB-C is rolling out, so the micro USB problems will be eliminated. But after having the Galaxy Note and the One M8, I was done with micro USB and uh, thank God I don't have to use it now. It just did my head in, really, really don't like it, don't like the cables, don't like the connectors, do not like micro USB. But that's not a direct fault of the phone. Brilliant, fantastic Android phones out there, all micro USB. So I'm, yeah, that shouldn't really be a point, but it was something that frustrated me. Point number four was something that stopped me being able to use the phone for vlogging, and that is an unreliable SD card reader. Um, I don't know why, and I couldn't really find any information about this online, but the high demand of recording um, 40 or 50 minutes worth of 1080p onto an SD card just threw the phone into a fit. Um, I couldn't reliably vlog with it. And then when I wanted to transfer said footage to the computer, the combination of various things, the fact that it was an Android device, HTC, blah 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 and the faulty SD card it was so difficult to get footage off of it and then I was getting all sorts of problems when I wanted to take the SD card out of the phone um, I tried various different things for months and months and the, the front facing camera was great for vlogging rear facing was terrible so it was a bit awkward there um, but yeah the SD card was nowhere near reliable enough which was a big shame because it's a big selling point and I went for the 16 gig handset thinking that I could expand the storage and in the latest days I didn't have an SD card in there at all. I had loads of read write errors, crazy errors with the card corrupting. Um, I have tried numerous cards, it may be a fault with my device but I never found it that um, that reliable anyway and there was definitely a lack of SD card management or rather file management in the phone itself. I had a sort of bundle of third-party apps that were kind of half okay at doing certain aspects of the file managing uh, but the SD card for me never worked out which is annoying because I would, would never buy an Android phone without an SD card reader and the fact that it didn't work for me was just kind of like it was just like being kicked in the teeth, really. Um, I wouldn't have gone for the handset if I knew I was going to have those issues. Number five is a gripe that I didn't expect to speak about, but that is the position of the sleep-wake button. Uh, it's on the top of the device. The device is far too big. Uh, even after getting used to using the phone, I was still not used to the fact that the button was on the top. Now that I've switched to a device that the button is on the side again, and with my Galaxy Note it was on the side, it is much, much better. Uh, I was shocked that the button was on the top of the M8. Really didn't like it at all. Um, big, big thumbs down from me. Number six is a bit of a mixed bag, but it's in the cons because it doesn't work all the time. Now, the gestures, as you guys know, the One M8 has soft keys. There's no home button um, or menu button or back button. So it's all soft keys. So when you want to wake up the device, you can do this double tap thing on the screen for it to pop into life, and I know loads of Android phones are doing that these days. I think it's fantastic. That would have gone in the pros list because I love that, and it's something that I'm missing at the moment. Um, but reason it's in the cons list is because two out of five times of trying to use it, it doesn't work. And in order to get it to work, you have to power up the phone with the button, unlock it, lock it again, and then the gestures will start working. So the double tap was the only one that I ever really cared about. And two out of five times, like I said, or four out of ten times or whatever, it didn't work. So inconsistent but good gestures, unreliable feature. Um, unfortunately couldn't put it in the pros and something that did annoy me pretty much every day. Number seven is something that I was extremely disappointed with. It's very important for a smartphone to be good at phone calls and the One M8 is very good at phone calls, but point number seven is horribly unnecessarily loud phone calls. Now, what do I mean by that? When you hold the phone up to your head and speak to someone on the phone, the clarity that you get is really, really good from the earpiece, but what I don't understand is 
why can that bloke over there that's the other side of a 15-foot room hear every word that the person is saying on the other end of the phone? I don't know what it is about the phone, whether they use the speaker in the top grill at a really low gain for phone calls or whether they have a separate earpiece, I don't even know. But even on the lowest volume setting to speak to someone on the phone, Everyone in that room can hear your phone conversation if the room is quiet. So if you're in like an office environment, in a library, in wherever, I don't even know. Um, just any quiet situation, everyone can hear what's happening on the other end of the phone. And obviously, I've had a year, you know, recently I've had a baby, he's four months old, and I had this phone when I was doing quite a bit of negotiating with some personal elements of my life, you know, hospital appointments and, and things to do with the little man and that. And I don't want everyone hearing my phone conversations. And I was always wary that people could because people used to say, man, Tom, you have your phone call so loud. And to my ear, they weren't sounding that loud. But everyone could hear them. So I don't know what it is about the HTC. Um, that was really annoying and there was nothing I could ever do about it. And maybe a few of you are sitting there shaking your heads going, what is Tom on about? It was genuinely like that. It was loud. You can hear... I, I never used speakerphone because if I turned it up and held the phone here, I could... I could understand what they were saying in a voicemail, for instance. If I was listening to a voicemail, I could have it on my desk and I could hear it. Anyway, that's by the by. It was extremely loud and I, I thank God I can go back to having private phone calls where only I can hear the person on the other end. Number eight is something that annoyed me. Uh, I noticed it on the first day of using the phone. When I had my Galaxy Note 2, I became quite reliant on the notification LED. I think the notification LED is something very good about Android devices. It's great to see when you got a text message or when you got a Facebook message or when you got low battery. Uh, or it's great to even just see it glowing dimly when the phone is charging because the USB is so unreliable. Uh, but something I hated about the HTC was the LED was embedded into one of the speaker holes. So there's tiny perforated marks where the speakers are on the device. The LED was in there and you could only see the LED if you were looking directly at the phone or at certain angles. So if the phone was off to your side on the desk, you couldn't see the LED. If you were slightly too under the phone, so if the phone was sitting on like a table there and you're sort of here, you can't see the LED. So on my Samsung, I could see it from any angle because it was just part of the top casing. On the HTC, I had to specifically look to see if the LED was there. And within three or four days, I just stopped relying on it completely and never bothered to look at it. And uh, I'd catch a glimpse of it every now and again. I caught a glimpse of it every now and again, but it was never useful to me because of the placement and the fact that you had to really look to try and find it. Number nine is quite an unusual one and something that wouldn't normally bother me me, but this was meant to be a flagship device and I feel very disappointed that something like this could happen. Number nine is the HTC lettering on the back will unpeel fairly quickly. I lost my H um, probably four or five months into owning the device, closely followed by the C. The T is still clinging on for dear life, um, but it's not a big problem because the plastic insert falls out and then you still have where it's in the metal, you know, the shape of the letter in the metal, so you can still read it. In fact, it looks a little better. But what's really annoying is the glue residue that you have hanging around for a week or two uh, while it's still coming out of the gap and stuff like that. And it got all over the back of the phone and made my hands sticky. It was awful. And just something that I thought, this is basic, you know, make your lettering stick on the phone. It was, it was crazy. I laughed when I saw the H fall off because I was like, this is meant to be a flagship device. Why are bits dropping off of it for no apparent reason um so yeah the lettering fell off the back that's just a sign of what the hell i just couldn't believe that obviously it doesn't impact the use of the phone at all um but such as life i wasn't accepting that and someone somewhere else in the house is hoovering so hopefully my microphone doesn't pick it up that much but we're nearly at the end anyway guys so stick with me number 10 is something that uh it's my last con and it's something that I may get a bit of hate for, but this is just my opinion. And yes, maybe I shouldn't have gone for such a flagship device if I don't need all of that power, but I do find the One M8 unnecessarily bulky, heavy, and just big to hold. I find it big. The fact that it has um, a smaller screen than the Galaxy Note, but feels bulkier in the hand is kind of weird. Um, it's a very thick device for what it is, in a way, um, but it's not so much that. It's more the combination of, of the solid metal phone, which feels like nice build quality, 
but at the same time with the curved back and the fact that it is quite a large device it just feels bulky in the hand and I'm not going to compare but this feels a lot nicer in the hand it's just got that you can just hold it it's got that feel to it I never did feel like I was comfortable holding my HTC plus what comes into this category is the screen the usable screen space because there's no soft keys and it's got a big lip at the bottom the screen is pushed up so even if you do find a comfortable place to hold the phone you'll be stretching up even more to try and press buttons at the top of the screen uh, because the phone is quite large and you need space for those soft keys now it's not a problem because the phone is built well, apart from that lettering and the faulty camera lens and the faulty uh, SD card tray, I guess. But anyway, it's not a problem because the phone is built well for the most part, but it is too bulky for my liking. And there, they, there were phones at the time of the 1M8 release that were a lot sleeker with the same power. So was never happy about that. It was always bulkier than I thought. I held it first when I bought it. I didn't hold it in a shop or anything. Uh, I didn't mind at the start, but towards the end, it was getting a bit bulky and heavy. So there are 10 cons. That is all of my pros and cons about the device that I'm gonna mention. I could ramble on and on, but let's get to the conclusion of this video. The One M8 is a blazing fast device. Even by today's standards, it's still great. But the appalling rear camera and the problems that I encountered for basic things that I wanted to use the phone, that just rendered it unusable for me. Um, I actively tried to avoid using the phone because it really did annoy me that much. If you guys take those 10 things and add them all together, that is basically a, the usability of the entire device that annoyed me. And since I've replaced the HTC, I've been using the phone a lot more. I've been using my phone a lot more. Now, granted, everyone uses a phone more when they first have it, but I'm actually achieving more on the new device. Um, there were things that annoyed me about the operating system that I'm not going to go into. I am going to make a separate video about that. Um, and there are things that annoy me about, about iOS. That's why I'm not going to talk about it in this video. But hopefully you guys have got a clearer picture now of why I ditched the HTC One M8. It wasn't for me and certain features that I really needed just didn't work. That SD card thing, the camera thing, not, not cool at all. So I will highly likely be selling the device as spares or repairs on eBay. It works fine, you can use it, but the camera is shot. The SD card tray doesn't work really, um, and there's scratches all over it. So yeah, it's pretty much a pile of junk. HTC is only worth about 120 on eBay anyway. Absolutely gutted about how much it's depreciated in such a short amount of time. It was a bad investment for me, um, and I'm gutted about it. But move on, things are going well now. Who cares? It's only tech. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. As always, give it a thumbs up if you did. Thumbs down if you didn't. Explain why in the comment section below. Or if you have any questions about anything, fire them down below. I will do my best to answer. And as always, I will see you next time.